we're a small agency in Melbourne and I, I think I need to be myself here. And the very first thing is uh, I'm really the head code monkey there rather than the development director. Um, I think it's just about putting, got to put myself out there as well. So uh, I'm here to talk to you about Statomic today. So first of all, the big question really is, what is Statomic? And uh, well, actually, no, we can't do that first. Laracon is all about having everyone be included and that includes the cat people. So <laughs> I now... Everyone needs representation here. So we've got Toby, we've got uh, Zach there. If you ever have a video call with me, you'll probably have Zach come in and make an appearance. Um, he hears my voice and he'll come running. So, um, yep, the cats are out there as well. And I'm not a crazy cat guy, even though I know my shirt tells a different story. But between cats and donuts, we'll see how we go. Anyway, statomic comes from the English word static and dynamic. And basically what Statomic is going to do is take your static files and put some dynamic magic with it uh, on a very dynamic platform and that's where Statomic comes from. You'll hear all sorts of weird little pronunciations of how people put this together. Um, Statomic, great content management system. Now it is based on Laravel. That's Buckshot Thunderstride, by the way. Um, the Statomic team do things a little bit differently and they've got their own mascot. Um, quick little segue on that note, at their flat camp, which is their conference earlier this year, uh, they actually had money made up and instead of the president, it was buckshot on there. Anyway, um, we, we got to buy things with it at the, the camp store. Anyway, cool, we'll get back onto that. Uh, 10 year old, uh, just over 10 year old content management system built on top of Laravel, and it is gonna be flat file first. So your configuration can be stored in YAML files, your content will be stored in markdown files, uh, but you can also extend it to Eloquent if you're needing to grow beyond what um, your flat files will be able to do. You can still have tens of thousands of pages before you're gonna have any performance problems with Statomic but it is incredibly flexible. So whether you're wanting to use it as a standalone CMS, whether you're wanting to bolt it onto something else, whether you want to use it as a foundation for your static, start, static site generator, whether you want to use it as a headless CMS, Statomic is adaptable to shift how you need it to work and incredibly extensible. As with so many things within the Laravel ecosystem, it is very extensible for you. So there are add-ons that you can install. There are tags. There are, you can write your own tags and your own add-ons as well to take everything that Laravel has and apply that to the Statomic world as well. So it is a fully featured content management system. Out of the box, it does have a little bit of a learning curve and that's where I think some people can kind of get a little bit lost. It's about the words, it's about the images, it's about the text, uh, the forms, the navigation. And uh, we're able to use Glide for all of our assets and that's where, where it can become really powerful. So who's had a, uh, first of all, who's used a content management system before, show of hands. Okay, who's used Statomic before out of curiosity? A couple, cool, lovely. Who's had a client upload a 10 meg JPEG image for a little icon like that? <laughs> yeah, okay, we've, had, we've all had that before. So when we use Glide, um, so the PHP League library, uh, we can use Glide, we can then render out our images uh, suitably sized for the web so that we can avoid those things from happening. Uh, a recent update even allowed us to apply presets when a client uploads the image so it can even save it smaller before it starts doing anything. Uh, and that includes our next gen formats like WebP2. Uh, so all, all of our content authors will have a role-based access control so we can ensure that they're not having uh, freedom to break the site. Uh, one of the big differences between Statomic and some other content management systems is that this is not something that you can just pick up off the shelf and away you go. You need to have a little bit of code help along the way to really get the most out of it. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. And I think you're probably the right audience to appreciate that. Um, but it does also mean that the control panel can do a lot for you, uh, which can also break your site. So you kind of don't want your clients to be in there, but the authentication is fantastic. Now, the big thing though, the big selling point is the tailor-made uh, authoring experience for your users, because who thinks you are important? So I got like three little responses there. Three people think that you are important. It's really that all? Four, okay, cool. We'll go with four. Um, your users are actually really important as well. And having giving them a content authoring experience that works for them is actually more important than what you're doing. Yes, it's a great dev experience, but also for your users. They're the ones who will use this more at the end of the day. That's what it's really gonna be important for. So the big thing to get your head around with Statomic is that all of your content really is based around the domain that it needs to be built in. So when you get it up and running, you are going to have uh, a pages collection and that's where your content pages will live. So you have a heap of different fields. There are over 40 different field types that come with Statomic. So we've got a text area, we've got a select box, we've got some checkboxes, and these fields uh, make up our blueprint 
for how your content is going to be edited. So that edit interface is built by this particular blueprint. We're also able to take these fields and group them into field sets so that we can reuse them in multiple pieces of content. So whether you've got a page, whether you've got a blog post, you can actually reuse field sets. And one of the ways that we do this is with our metadata. So all of our pages will need metadata, the title, the description, the way we want to deal with sitemap, whether it's included or excluded from the sitemap. And uh, we, we have an SEO field type, uh, sorry, field set that we use that we can include in all of our content. So if we need to make a change, such as when a particular chirpy uh, Content, uh, social media network changed its name to a letter or something that happened. Uh, we just had to make one change and then the whole site's up to date for that. So field sets make it really easy for us to keep everything in sync. So let's have a look because obviously me talking is one thing, but let's go and check it out. This is the Statomic uh, control panel. Let's just make it a little bit bigger to make it easier to see what's going on. Okay, so we're just running with the pro version here. Uh, so we're able to actually put our own logo in, which is nice for the, for the customer. We've got our search bar at the top and when your users don't quite know where things are, this is actually really useful. So this will search through all of the content in your site, all of the assets that you've got in your site, so images and whatnot. So I know that I've got a privacy policy in this particular setup. We can search for it and jump straight to it, even if I don't know whereabouts that lives within the navigation. Uh, I know we've also got an image. We've got a couple of sprinkle images. That'll make sense um, as we go. Um, but we can search for it and jump straight into it and we know exactly where we are. Now, this navigation is consistent on all parts of the, the platform so that wherever your user is, they can use that search to get where they need to get. We're able to customize the navigation. They're able to choose what they want to look at when they first log in as well. Now, a little bit of the, the terminology that we need to get our head around. Uh, okay, so over on the left-hand side, we've got collections and this is where all of your content is going to sit. So pages by default. If you need a blog, you create a blog collection and your blog posts will live in there. If you were a cinema, for example, you could create a movies collection and all of your movies would have their own blueprint and they would live in there as well. Each collection gets its own set of blueprints. You can have multiple blueprints. Uh, so for a cinema, for example, that movie, you could have the title and the synopsis and the runtime and a, an asset field for the movie poster to be uploaded. Whereas a blog post might be more about the tags and the author. Um, our navigation, pretty self-explanatory. Menus, you can create as many as you need. Uh, and they can link to your entry. So if you rename an entry or move an entry, you're not going to break your URLs because it's all related to those particular files. Now, taxonomies. Our best and easiest way to look at this would really be about blogs and tags. That's the simplest way to describe it. But you're able to create as many tags as you need. So you could have tags for your blog posts, but then for your... Um, your movie example, you might have genre, you could have action or horror uh, as your taxonomies as well. So you can start categorizing and filtering and searching using uh, all of these taxonomy terms and the tags that come with Statomic are ready to go for you too. Assets are your images, your files that your users will upload and they'll live in an asset container. You can create as many as you want and because this is built on Laravel, all of the file systems that you've got within Laravel are available. So you want to store them locally, you want to store them privately, you want to put them on S3, wherever you want to put them, configure your, collection, uh, your container and your assets can go in there. Globals is something we'll hit back on a little bit later, but our globals are a great place to put in, you know, those little words that need to live in the bottom of the footer that otherwise you have to go and change your template file to make. Globals are a great place to do that. And the best bit is all of this is based on blueprints. So if you need your assets to have an alt attribute and you want them to have a caption and a link to something else, add it to your blueprint and away you go. Everything is based on that idea of blueprints. So it gives you the tools to really be flexible with what you need it to do. Uh, okay, one more thing before we go through. This is our dashboard that we look at when we log in. Uh, now, these are widgets, and widgets are great for the user. Not so much for us. We, we, we know exactly where we're going when we use it. But uh, the first one is just our collections widget, and this is actually going to allow us to jump straight to any of the entries that we have in our pages collection. Our second one is from uh, a, it's based on an idea that Rob DeCourt, who has built the, the uh, peak starter kit for Statomic, which shows the missing alt attributes because alt attributes are important for every asset and we can actually have these prompted here. So let's just quickly go through and we'll, we'll add one. Uh, it's a swarm the sprinkle donuts. Has anyone had that nightmare recently or is that just me? <laughs> okay. So we've gone through and saved that. We jump back to our dashboard and that's gone from our list. So that way, as they're uploading new, new assets, this is able to be updated and updated on the fly so that they can see what they are actually missing. 
And our bottom one, because it is about the customer, this is where we've created our own widget because we can, it's Statomic, it's what it gives us power to do. Uh, we've got a link to the admin guide that we would give our client. They can then start a chat. We've hooked up our HubSpot chat so they can jump on board and we know where they are within the platform whenever they jump in. It's really easy for them to get in touch with us from within the control panel too. Uh, Cause let's face it, you send them a manual and yeah, emails disappear. So um, yeah, so that's basically a quick little crash course into Statomic. Uh, let's keep moving on. So why would you use Statomic? You're here for Laracon. So you, it's built on Laravel. That's, that's clearly a big plus. It's modern and it's maintained. It's updated regularly. Every two weeks, there'll be new features coming out. And the, the core team aren't afraid to give you new features throughout the year. About two months after Laravel has its next major update, Statomic will receive its next major update as well. And you can install it and update it with Composer. And it just makes life so much easier. Now, it's going to be flexible for you. So that means you could build a small site. You could build a big site with tens of thousands of pages. Uh, you could use Tailwind. You could use Bootstrap. You could use Alpine. You could use jQuery. Is that still a thing? You could use nothing at all. You could have vanilla, CS uh, vanilla CSS and JavaScript. Uh, it's completely up to you because it will adapt to suit the way that you want to work with the tech stack that you want to work with. And that even goes for Livewire. There is an add-on that you can use that will hook your Livewire components into your Statomix site. But the bigger one is it's about your users and it's going to give them the best in class authoring experience. And that's what's going to be really important. We've had clients when they start seeing how Statomic works within their domain, they have that penny drop moment where they go, oh, oh, it all makes sense because it's now asking them to fill in the blanks. It's not asking them to say, here's a title and here's a jumbo text field. And if you want to put some complex markup in there, copy and paste this and then you need to put the tag, you know, all of that sort of fun stuff when you've just got a single text field you're able to build all the building blocks that a user would need and they just need to fill in the blanks. And that just makes it so much easier for the users. So, you know, if my 76-year-old uh, mum who has her own Statomic website, she's an artist, there's logic to that. Uh, if she can keep her website up to date, then, you know, anyone who's got a little bit more tech savviness than my mum uh, will have no dramas at all. So it really is something that is very easy for anyone to keep up to date themselves. Now, Laravel has Artisan, and you probably use it in your deployment scripts as well. Um, Statomic, just ask it really, really nicely to do something. <laughs> PHP, please make tag, and you'll get a tag ready to go. PHP, please static clear. It'll clear the static cache that Statomic has. You can use these things within your deployment scripts just like you would any Artisan command. Uh, it's just a little more polite. Just remember to say please, and away you go. As you go through, just like you can ex uh, create your own Artisan commands, you can also create your own uh, please commands. And if you're using Fig, uh, I also created a recipe to um, help you get your autocomplete for your terminal too. Now, when you start running with Statomic within the, uh, the templating side of it, Statomic does come with its own templating engine called Antlers. You can also use Blade if you like, but Antlers is a little bit easier to get up and running, especially when you want to start using add-ons, uh, tags, and modifiers as well, and you get all of that awesome stuff that Laravel has under the hood as well. So maybe you like the app structure, maybe you like dealing with collections, maybe you like form requests, maybe you like the way that validation works. Maybe you like the fact that it just works nicely with, with the way that Forge runs. Um, but there's also one other thing. There's also Sparza. So because it's based on Laravel, everything that is available, you can also get within your Statomic app too. They've also made uh, a responsive image add-on, which is fantastic. You can have aspect ratios and uh, different um, images for different breakpoints as you go through using your Tailwind breakpoints too. Uh, we've also extended their Google fonts add-on that they've written for uh, Laravel, we've made a tag for that to run within Statomic, within Antlers, so you can use locally cached Google fonts using their package. Maybe you just want to use Laravel backup to back up your whole site. Because it's based on Laravel, you're able to get there. So the familiarity for you as a Laravel developer is a lot easier because you already love and know how Laravel works. Now, it's getting that time, so um, yeah. Let's look at a really cool app. I'm really excited to be able to, to, to release this one today. Um, now, let's jump over and check it out. Brand new app, Livewire app. Um, it's actually completely fake. It's nothing real, but it's, it's all about donuts. So I think I've been having some slight nightmares recently. If anyone wants a good donut, short stop coffee. Anyway, um, cool, Livewire app. Uh, what we now need to do is we need to do something with it. It's great having the app, but we don't want to be going back to the code every time we need to be making a change. So. We've got our app, Livewire, Laravel, lovely. We need a blog, okay, what can we do? We can use Statomic for that. And the best thing with Statomic is that you can use it standalone 
or you can drop it into an existing app that you have as well. And that's what we've done today. Now, I have already gone through and uh, put that into place because no one really wants to see me running a Composer uh, message in real time. But let's just have a quick look at the app structure that we have here as well. It looks very familiar to what you would see in Laravel. There's a couple of extra folders. We've got a users folder where your users will live. Uh, you've got a content folder where all of your content files will live. But you've got resources. And guess what? In there, there's a views folder as well. It's all very familiar for you as a Laravel developer. Okay, so let me just make sure I don't go out of order here. We need to add a blog. Let's jump back over to Statomic and let's get, let's get cracking. Okay, we need our blog post to live within a collection. So we've got our pages. They live in the pages collection, makes sense. We need to add a blog post. So let's just go through and do that now. I'm gonna call it blog, create collection, and bang, we got a collection for our blog post ready to go. Now we need to configure our blog collection to behave a little bit differently. So when we go to configure, Blog posts have published dates, so let's just turn those on. You can control your date behaviors about what should and should not be visible past certain dates. Uh, we don't want to make it orderable, but we do want them in descending order. We'll jump down here. Now, our template, this is what we want our blog posts to look like. We want them to look like our blog show page. So just like you would have in your controller, you've got your index to see your index, you've got your show to see an individual. Same terminology in Lingo. Because we are dropping this into a Livewire app, we actually just want to use an existing template. Away we go. Now we also need to figure out our routing. So typically you'd want to have something like blog and then you'd probably want to use the slug of that particular blog post. You could use date patterns and things like that if you want to go down that path too. Now if that blog mounting point needs to change, you'd have to come through here. But what we can actually do is use another variable called mount. And we can then hook into an existing page that we have, such as our blog index page, hook that in. And then if we happen to rename that page, or if we have a user that happens to rename that page, it's not going to bring your site down because everything will just still run nicely. We'll go and save that. OK, so now we need to add a blog post. Let's just go and create an entry. Now, out of the box, it's nothing particularly exciting. It's got a title, so my first blog post. Now let's uh, put some content in. Now I'm not going to type because I'd make so many typos, but because add-ons are so fantastic, Jack Slate's a UK developer and he's created this little add-on that we run in dev. I want four paragraphs of lorem, so I'm just going to type lorem four and away we go. So that's making it really easy when you're going through and building a site and populating it to try to flesh out with a bit of fake content. We can just use that cute little add-on uh, and away we go. Right. Now, before we jump any further, I just want to show you a live preview because it is really cool. And this is, again, one of those things that's really good for your users who are not particularly visual. They may not like looking at just boxes and filling them out. If we jump over to live preview, uh, and we can actually see then the updates come through. So that way, if you've got a user who is struggling to visualize how something will look, they can actually go through and update everything in real time as they go. Now, what we do want to go through is check out our blog post. And it's kind of ugly. It's missing things. Yeah, it fits in with the rest of the site. But blog posts have authors, and they have dates, and they've got tags, and they typically have an image. So we've got our blueprints that we can look at. Let's jump back over and go to our blueprints. Yeah, right. Can lose that. OK, so we had our date field. We can just drag that back over and move around wherever we want it to go. Now, we want to add an author field. We've got 40 plus different types. You can create your own field types too. We just need our author to be a text field. So let's just call that author. Our validation, we want it to be required. But what if you were entering an email address? You could also then check it out and see that we have all of these validation rules available to us just the same way that Laravel will work. You can hook in your own. Just away you go. Uh, OK, we've got our author. Now, we want to add our tag. So we want to add another one. Let's call this one taxonomy terms. That's exactly what we want. Let's call that tags. OK. We'll make it a select drop down, and we'll pick from our tags taxonomy. Here's one I prepared earlier. Uh, lovely. Let's keep going. Now, we also need an image. OK, that's going to be an asset. So we've got our assets field type. We want to make that an image. We want to make sure that we only have one image available, and it's going to hook into our assets container. Let's make that required, too. OK, so we've updated our blueprint. That was pretty easy. But uh, there's still one problem, and it's just that it kind of looks a bit ugly, and it's just still a bit slabby. So let's jump back to our blueprint editor. And the thing is that the blueprint editor that we're looking at here is going to work whether you're looking at a page, whether you're looking at a contact form, navigation. You have the same tools available for you. So I actually want the author to come up a little higher. So let's drag that up. And I don't want it to fit all the way across. Let's just make that a little smaller. And I think the date can slot in there. Now, let's bump our tags up, and we'll drag our image up too. And you know what? They can probably sit side by side. We've got plenty of space. 
Ah, but actually, let's move our content down. So if you've got really long forms, you can then actually drag fields around and create different sections. So if we jump back to our blog post, we can actually see all of those fields have now been moved and shuffled around, and that could be something that makes it easier for the user to understand what they're looking at, uh, or it can just be something that, that can help aesthetics, breaking large blocks into smaller blocks so that it's easier to digest. So I'm going to be the author here. Uh, let's add an image. Let's use our person image, and we'll just pop in a couple of our tags that we've got. Cool. Save and publish. Let's jump back over. And nothing's there. Okay, so we've got them in the blueprint. We're storing the content. It told us that it had saved, but we now need to update it. Update our template. So let's jump over to PHP Storm. And because we're used to using Laravel, we can jump into resources, views. We've got our blog folder. And again, similar terminology, index and show. We can jump into our show view. Now, this is where we can actually go through and let's see if we can make that a little bigger. Nope, I don't want to do that. There we go. Okay, let's use some of these tags. Now, um, First of all, before we start looking into that, let's just check out our content. So the way that Statomic stores its content, you could be using a markdown field, you could be using BARD, which is the field I've used here. And the way that BARD works is it is based on TipTap and ProseMirror, and it will store structured markup within the MD file that we've got. Statomic will then parse that when it's then needing to come out to the, the template. And we're just given a content variable because that's what our field was called but it will handle all of that augmentation and all of the different field types can augment their data to suit whatever it is that needs to be uh, used. So a structured markup that if you go and edit your uh, MD file, you can go through and have fun doing that, but it is all structured. So the user never needs to know the code. It will then get augmented to beautiful, clean and fluent HTML. Uh, if you've got a single text field, then that's just easy. We can use that. So let's just add our author. Now this is gonna be by me. So Within our double uh, braces, we just need to type author, and away we go. So let's just save that and check it out. And look, hey, we've got our author. We're now writing with antlers. Easy. Okay. That's easy. That's just a simple string. So what about our tags? Let's jump in. And tags, we've got multiples. So that's going to be an array. So typically, we want a start and an end. So that makes sense. Okay, cool. How about we just drop our title for our tag in? We can then jump back over, check it through, and we're outputting that. You can then spend a little bit more time, obviously, formatting it besides black text on a gradient background. But one more thing that we will look at, and that's going to be Glide, because Glide is really cool. Uh, and there is a really cool feature I want to show you. This is leading to something. OK, hopefully I don't disappoint now. So we have our, our image field. And because we need a few things from this, we will wrap that up. Within here, we're going to get a source, uh, uh, sorry, a URL to the source of the image. We're going to get the width and the height. We're going to get our alt attribute, all the things that we need for an image. So if we just hook in to that, we can use our UR URL variable that we'll look at. Hey, if you want to know what the tags do, do you know where you look? The documentation. It's all in there, just letting you know. But hey, we are also getting width. And guess what? That one's called width. Uh, we're also going to get the height. Does anyone want to have a guess? Mm, yeah. How smart is that? Okay, cool. Now we want this image because we're using with Glide. We can we can transform that image. So let's make the width be 1,000 pixels, and let's make the height be 500 pixels. Okay, cool. We're going to get our image. Lovely. Let's go and check it out. We have a lovely. Hang on, wait. That's a nice mouth you've got, but I want to see the donut, not the mouth. So, right, we've got a portrait image, and it's now being cropped to a panoramic. And and again, this is a common thing. Some people will say, "Hi, I want to use this lovely portrait image in a lovely wide panoramic." What can we do about that? We can do use Statomic for this. So if we go and edit our asset, we have this focal point editor. We can then click around, and it can recrop the image for us and set the focal point and store that as metadata alongside the image. So we're just going to pick closer to the donut and save that, save that. Now, there's one more thing we need to do to make this work. We just need to be the fit equals crop focal. Jump back over to our blog post, check it out, and hey presto, we can now see our portrait image that's cropped to a focal point. Uh, we can then use this to ensure that the images are fitting within the container that needs to be fit at, uh, fitted in within different breakpoints uh, and focus on what's actually important in the image, not just that center crop. So you can choose how that's going to work, and the author is able to choose that based on every single individ individual image that they are using. So there's a quick little crash course into writing antlers. So well done, you've all written your first antlers file. Good stuff. Uh, cool. Why would you use Statomic for this? So having your code and content in one place can be good, and it can also not be good. In this instance, it's a great example because we've got an existing app. We just need to put um, a blog in place. So storing it together, yeah, that's cool. Others, 
Maybe not, maybe you want to keep it separate. But you'll also get content version control because if we're storing all of our content just as flat files, that can all be pushed into Git. That can all be run through the same version control processes that you'll be using. So if something needs to roll back, you can roll back, you can see that history. And Statomic even has built-in drafts, working drafts and revisions. If you're wanting to uh, give the author control over versions as well, they can be working on content, saving it as draft and away they go. Now this is gonna simplify your development and your deployment and your updates. Again, you're working in the Laravel ecosystem, so stay in the Laravel ecosystem. That's really the big thing here. Now, there's gonna be one thing though. We've got an app, so we've got our donuts and we've got our members, so we need a control panel. Now, what do we need? We need, we need some routes, we need a controller, we need some validation rules in here. Um, you know, I, I think I've got a better idea. We can use Statomic for this as well. Uh, right. Let's go and check this out. We're gonna flesh out that idea a little bit more. We're gonna look at navigation, we're gonna look at uh, runway, we're gonna look at custom field types as well as global. So let's jump over to, again, here's one I prepared earlier. Another version of our site, we'll just make that a little bigger for us. Okay, navigation. So I've hooked up our navigation now and uh, extended our navigation blueprint, I've created a custom field type that's actually pulling the routes from the Laravel app so that they can go through and add a nav item. But we wanna add our blog, so let's just link to our entry. We'll then see all of the entries available. We can then select blog, add that in. And because we have got a custom uh, blueprint here, let's just make this one be blue. Submit that, save that, jump back over to our complete example. And we now have our blog link appearing in our menu alongside our route based uh, links as well. If the user needed to change something around, if they felt their blog was actually really that important, they can drag that around and then it's all there ready to go and they can go through and see their blog. Again, with a little bit more formatting and finesse, you can go through and make them look a little bit prettier. We can also then have our tag index views that can filter your content based on what, uh, what tag you're actually looking at. Cool, so let's have a check out Runway. Now Runway is uh, an add-on made by Duncan McLean. He's now actually a core uh, Statomic developer as well. And essentially what this will do is generate the tables and generate the edit views that you need uh, to be able to uh, hook into your Eloquent models. So this li uh, Livewire app has Eloquent models under the hood. This is, table is now pulling straight from the database and we're using blueprints, the same blueprints that, that we've used to create pages and blog posts and our navigation. And we're able to map all of those fields and all those different field types to suit the way that our Eloquent models are built. So you can now go through and actually edit your database directly from within Statomic. Now, you might also want to be using something like Nova, and Statomic and Nova will coexist with each other as well. Um, but if you do have a, a, a smaller use case, this can be a great way to give users database access uh, without actually giving them database access. Now, we can create custom field types, and you know, because we all love a good donut, uh, rather than just numbers for ratings, because numbers are boring and overrated, you know, we've got a cool little donut number field type, and that's mimicking what the, what the website actually has too. If we go through and look at my donuts, and scroll down, that's exactly what the user sees. So again, it's really keeping it in the same mindset of what your users would be looking at. Uh, within uh, looking at Runway, we also have relationships. So this is hooked into this particular member, that's me. Um, so you're able to play with those relationships that you would define in Eloquent straight here within Statomic as well. Uh, cool, so what have we talked about? We talked about navigation, we talked about custom fields, Runway, globals. Okay, these are those weird little bits of text that every site will have somewhere copyright footer text, for example. So we can just store that in a global. We can build these globals based on whatever fields that you're actually needing. And you can see that's just sitting down the bottom, bottom of our page down here. What if they changed uh, to uh, Acme Proprietary Limited? So they can go through and make that change, click save, refresh the page, and it doesn't update, but hey, it should. Um, <laughs> Hey, if that's all that went wrong today, I'm happy with that. I'll, 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 I'll take that. I'll take that one. Yeah. Okay. But you can, you can see the point that you're able to create these different blueprints that are based on the data that your users need to store. Okay. I'm running out of time, so let's just keep moving on. So what about, what else can you do with Statomix? So let's talk about caching and performance. Rendering pages can be slow. Yeah, it's always the case. Whether you're using a database, whether you're using um, flat files, whether you're using Statomix or WordPress or Joomla, whoever you're using, uh, caching pages will speed up your site and Statomic will come with a couple of caching drivers out of the box. We love using static caching. It will render the page out into straight HTML uh, that will then just get served by Nginx. No PHP processes needed after that. 
Statomix is even smart enough to know if anything in that page requires a, a CSRF token, and it will then update that automatically with a little bit of JavaScript, or if you're using a no cache tag, that will all come out for you automatically and your site will be so fast. Uh, you can also cache images within the Glide internal cache. Maybe you want to actually put them into a, uh, a separate real folder on your server. Uh, you're able to play around with that caching and performance. If you need to nuke it when you deploy your site, please ask it and it will do it for you. Now, if your site's growing or if you're needing something that requires a little bit more control, yes, you've got query builders within Statomix so you can filter and search on your, query, uh, on your content. There are times you still will need Eloquent. You know, if anyone's ever done radius searches, for example, yeah, you'll need, you'll need Eloquent for that one. You can migrate your collections over to Eloquent really easily. There's a, um, a package that will allow you to do that effortless. You can choose your users or your content or whatever it is that you need to actually have running in Eloquent. You can use your tags, uh, modifiers, scopes, filters, query builders to play with the way that your content is looking on your front end. You can display it the way it needs to be displayed and you can write your own add-ons. We've written, uh, we released our ninth one this week. We've got a 10th one that's about to come out. I just need to write the documentation for it. And they're available on the marketplace for uh, anyone to be able to use. We've got a two-factor one. We've got an icon picker. We've got a sitemap one, an RSS feed one because RSS feeds are cool. I'm not going to let that die. Uh, so I love writing add-ons for Statomic. The community is fantastic. Just like everyone that's here has been so lovely and fantastic, the Statomic community is exactly the same. And it makes you feel so welcome and wanting to help and contribute. It's been really, really cool to work alongside some of the guys as well on some pull requests too. So that's been really good. Now, what has this done for us at Mighty? Now, the big thing is it's made co-working on projects a lot easier because we don't need to worry about a database anymore. Uh, if you're trying to migrate and uh, synchronize changes between a database for content changes, forget it, it's just not worth the hassle. But because everything can just be stored through Git, if I need to work on a site that someone else is working on, I can just pull it down, make the changes I need to, push it up, and I know that the content is gonna be uh, the same across the board, and we can use Git to handle any of those conflicts. It streamlined our deployment through Forge, uh, and that's gonna be a really big one because uh, you know, gone are the days where you open up an FTP client and uh, yeah, deploy your site that way makes things so much easier when you can just pull, push it, uh, pull it through rather from Git. And Statomic does also allow you to push changes back up to Git too. So if we need to work on a client site, we can just pull it down and it's all there ready to go for us. Now it simplified our tech stack and that's been a really big thing because we're now staying in that Laravel ecosystem the whole time. Uh, we're working with Laravel, we work with Inertia, we work with Vue, Alpine, Tailwind and Statomic obviously as well. And it allows us to stay in that one mindset the whole time so that we're not having to switch and change between the way that, that Joomla would work, for example. That's how uh, what we did used to work on. And also why I have no hair. Um, but it's much happier now. It's not growing back even though uh, I'm much happier now. But we're also less reliant on third parties. If you've used WordPress or Joomla forms and, and SEO, you'll need an add-on just to be able to use some basic features. But because Statomix based on blueprints, if you need something to happen, it's there. Forms are built in, ready to go with, with uh, all those field types available. I think the really big thing though is that it's made for happier developers. And <laughs> who thinks a happier developer is a good developer? Yeah. Yeah. We want to be a happy developers. And yeah, I may have lost the hair, but um, I'm a happier developer now for living and working in that Statomic ecosystem. So um, righto. If you want to know more, scan that link. That will take you through to a page. It will have links to the st our Statomic documentation, to our add-ons, also to the user group. Um, I'm looking after the Australian New Zealand user group for Statomic. We catch up every couple of weeks uh, via Zoom. You can see some familiar faces there as well. Uh, so if you are interested, in, please feel free to come and have a chat to me uh, during any of the breaks if you see me roaming around. Um, love to have a chat, and as you can tell, I'm going over time, so I can talk underwater. Uh, yeah, but thank you very much for your time today. I hope you found that useful. Wonderful. Thank you, Marty. Um, I'm going to go through some of the easier questions because there's some that I think <laughs> require a bit more time here to, to go through. So see, Marty, if you ask one of the longer questions. Number one, where can we buy that T-shirt? Uh, T-Turtle. Uh, T-Turtle. There you yeah. go. Very good. All my T-shirts are T-Turtle. Yeah. T-Turtle. Um, there are, as we know, lots and lots of WordPress plugins. Um, does, does Statomic cover a lot of the more common use cases, common plugins? You yeah. know, is it a good migration path? Yeah, so there are also add-ons that can help migrate from WordPress or other platforms across into Statomic as well. If you're able to get a, a um, like an Excel or CSV export of your content, you can suck that into Statomic. Um, but also things like, uh, so we've written a two-factor add-on. There's also add-ons for um, captures, whether you want to use Turnstile, HCAPTCHA, Google Capture. Uh, so a lot of the common sort of things are available as add-ons mm -hmm. if you need extra functionality. 
How does um, managing content work when you've got obviously live users writing content in production and then sort of, is it all just managed with Git? How does that content from production then end up back into Git? Yeah, so if you're using the pro version, you can choose to push your changes back up. Um, typically, we QR changes just so that the user experience is a little snappier. Um, so every 10 minutes, it'll just then batch up the latest changes back to the uh, Git repository. We can then pull those down if we need. Um, but that just all happens automatically for us. Excellent. Last question that I have for you, and then we're going to have some fun. What is the best donut? Oh. Now, you're going to appreciate this. So I'm from South Australia originally. Um, yeah. <laughs> South Australia have really good donuts, and uh, when I moved to Victoria, um, number one, I went and asked for a, a Berliner, and I, look, I was looked at like I was nuts. If you're in South Australian, you'll get what that what that's all about. <laughs> um, no, but Enjoy Bakery on the parade, and also in North Adelaide, um, they make the best donuts, sprinkle donuts. And when I was sick just before my birthday, I told someone this yesterday, and they couldn't believe it. I was unwell, my mum went to the bakery and dad constructed this little box so it wouldn't get squished and they literally put a donut in the post and express post me a donut. That's amazing. <laughs> Look, I, I was about to turn 40, I was sick, so, you know, come on, I, I, I got my donut. Looking yeah. after you. Well, thank yeah. you very much, Marty. I hope you all got something out of that. <laughs> <laughs>